Hey you guys, this is Ginger and John and I are on a three day cruise trying out whether we could be painting on the ship and filming it. This is a new thing we're trying and uh, if you guys remember Daniel Elliott who's the manager of Jerry's Artorama, he brought me a, a kit of a gouache which is an acrylic paint but it's more like watercolor, it's kind of a combination of the two. And we, uh, in this particular video, um, I'm going to show you, you know, we're, we're using the kit, used even used the brushes that were in the kit. And what I ended up painting was um, this. This is on a, I'll just show you, this was on a little tablet like that. And um, these are specially designed tablets. We have all the reference material and, and where you can get this on our website because the paper doesn't bleed through. And I even used the back side of this other paper to just sort of test what my brushes would do because these, these were brushes that came in the kit. And then we found, I got to tell you, those were the brushes that came in the kit. And then we kind of cheated and found these $3 set of uh, nail brushes from China which worked really good on these little fine lines here. I got to tell you, they're perfect for this kind of paint. So anyway, we're on a cruise ship. We're thinking that at some point we're going to be able to just uh, make videos on ships and maybe even do lessons on ships. We don't know, but I'll certainly do little seminars. Maybe sometime you might want to join us on a little something like this, a little inexpensive three-day cruise. And we'll take a day and do this, maybe a couple hours. But um, at least you can hang out and be around for the live demonstration, if not painting with me. Anyway, this is a thought. And I love this painting. It's one another one of our old dead artists that um, that I will again give you the name of. And it's done in the late uh, 1800s, and it even though it was oil, it feels like watercolor, doesn't it? So this was a great painting because we have sort of some watercolor techniques in here and some acrylic techniques, and so sort of a combination. I think you're going to like this painting. And um, hey, how fun is this? Is this great or what? This is an or what? Hi you guys, I want to uh, introduce you to a different type of acrylic painting using gouache. And I have just finished painting this landscape, um, a little seascape, and I'm going to put that tablet away. And I've got another little paper tablet that I'm going to be using. And um, John and I are on a cruise ship that we actually won a cruise vacation for three days over Columbus Day, and we're using gouache, and I've got, I went and found a, just I think somewhere on the save photos for reference photos, I found a, a little picture somewhere on the internet. I'm really, it's less important that I show you the photograph because I changed it quite a bit, but um, I am using a reference photo, which is why I bring the iPad, and we're using a gouache kit that um, is by Turner. And what's neat is, if you guys remember, Daniel Elliott gave this to me, and this is all the stuff. It talks about gouache is really kind of a, it's an acrylic, but it's kind of more watercolor-like. And, and I love the back of the box. It tells you how to use it. There's a little color mixing chart. You get two different whites, a, a little brushes. You get everything in the kit, which was too cool. And again, the palette is already out. I, I had already painted that other painting, and I've just got my iPad there just as a slight slightest reference for fall painting. Um, again, I'm using a little pencil to kind of uh, sketch this in. And what the purpose of this was to, you know, I'd never used gouache before. And even even though I have painted in watercolors, I never bought that. And I think if I hadn't seen that kit, I wouldn't have bought it. We wanted to test it out. The idea is, could we go on a cruise and paint something? We're up in the cafeteria. Everybody's gone ashore. And uh, instead of going to the a little private island, we're, we're filming this for you. And again, all those colors that are out were all done from another painting. And I wanted to see, you know, could I just... Um, you know, would it stay wet? I mean, how long would it stay wet? How do these things work? Um, there's just, again, I'm just sort of sketching in a little bit of a water line here. Um, you know, for a little river, we're going to put a little sky in, some few trees. Because the trees are lighter, in watercolor, you would have to leave the trees lighter. You'd have to leave the, the area where the yellow was going to go out. You know, you'd have to mask that off. But because this is acrylics, I think this will still layer. This is what I wanted to find out. How could I make that? So, again, the colors, the paint colors in the kit are a little bit different um, than than my regular acrylics. There's a there's a cobalt blue, there's an ultramarine blue, there's a, some sort of green color. So I'm just going with the colors to see what we get. Now, right now, what I'm doing is I'm just going to go ahead and 
put in a sky, it's sort of a turquoise blue sky, and I'll add some more white. And now you'll notice that I'm skipping down with the white and kind of blending that in and making these sort of long strokes. And my reference, which was good, was interestingly because the, the reference was obviously it was an oil painting, but it, um, which I'm pretty sure it was an oil painting, but it was painted the way a watercolor was. So sometimes what people like about watercolor is sort of this looseness. Now when you're painting acrylics on paper, which of course you can do a lot, you know, um, because acrylics are water-based medium, you can paint it on paper and you're going to get some of the absorption of uh, paper when you do that if you use a little bit of water. Now because it's a, a river and, and water has a tendency to mirror I'm kind of holding my iPad up to kind of get a sense of what I'm painting there. Um, you can see where I'm just putting in these different layers of blue in my water. And please notice that all the brush strokes are going back and forth. So uh, before we get too further along, if you're watching this on YouTube, we're going to ask that you subscribe to our channel. Take a moment and do that. Um, we hope you're enjoying these different um, these different types of videos that we, we we provide for you these different ways and now there's a lot of times artists will teach you to paint like them i want to teach you to paint and there's a lot of different ways to paint something sometimes we'll be painting like impressionists and today we're going to be painting the way someone might paint as a watercolor artist but again using our acrylic paint now the advantage i found to these uh, gouache paints was that they stayed wet i mean that paint is still wet i'm, I'm an hour in away from the other painting I did and um, I made that kind of brown color and I'm just not sure I like it real well so I'm coming back up and adding some new I'm mixing a different color you see that I wanted something a little more purple but rather than still stay in the yellow I I, I, I moved where I was mixing it I didn't keep trying to didn't kept keep trying to change the color I didn't want okay now I've got some sort of purple mountains I'm putting in the background and I was curious to see, you know, acrylics dry darker, but, you know, on paper, things react differently. Would it dry lighter when it was done, or would it dry darker? This was an interesting experience. Experience wasn't using um, any kind of hair dryer. We were sitting up in the, uh, in the cafeteria of the ship. Again, everybody had kind of gone ashore, and um, so I'm sort of adding some, you know, I've got some mountains, and I'm sort of changing colors as I go. And you'll notice that whenever I dip my brush in water, there's a towel underneath me, and I'm wiping off the brush because I don't want big globs of water on here on my brush. So I'm just going to, what you're going to see here is just the way of sort of layering in colors. The more water you use, the more transparent it's going to be. Um, I thought this was a great idea. When you think about it, you got in the kit, you got like five brushes, you got a ruler, you got that uh, little palette, the part at the top part of the tray is a palette, which we later decided didn't work that well because it was very hard to clean. John had a terrible time. He went down to the men's restroom afterwards and he tried to clean that. It took him a long time. There is a cleaner in the kit. There's a little tube that actually is an acrylic cleaner that was probably meant so you could clean the kit. And we didn't try, um, he didn't think of that. Um, I think I would just, for me, I would just bring wax you know, wax paper palette. It's not that big. But what I loved about this was you don't need a lot of paint for this. You can see I, I, I ended up with so much more paint uh, left over. Even after doing two full paintings, I was surprised, really surprised at how much paint I had. But what our idea was this. If we could travel and film, and now we're, we're shooting, you know, we're filming this, and if we could, you know, the idea is to travel and film. And then when I come back home, there's a lot of noise and music and everything and, and, you know, on the ship and people coming by and trying to talk to us. So we just went ahead and filmed it, carried on conversations with people. And then I've come back. And when we come back, I kind of explain what we're doing. Now you'll notice that I'm into some peach colors now and everything still layers. Everything is layering. I think this is really interesting how this worked because you couldn't really, the way we did this, you couldn't really do it with watercolor. But again, we have this sort of watercolor effect. And the paper is keeping the paint fairly wet. Again, no hair dryer. And we thought, look, wouldn't it be cool that we could arrange some travel areas? You know, we could, you know, people could maybe uh, uh, join us on a cruise and, uh, you know, bring a kit like this and paint. Uh, this doesn't take up a lot of space on a table. It doesn't seem to alarm people. A little uh, white cloth underneath your picture. 
kind of keep it simple. I think we could also probably use canvas, uh, uh, oh, the small canvas pads that we like to do, and keep it simple. When you're, when you're painting uh, out on, on location, either the first painting I did, I actually was looking out the window of the ship. This one I'm just looking from a reference photo. And, you know, that which is fine. You know, you're more than welcome to to go onto Pinterest and find the photo of this. And uh, if you want to see it yourself and print it out and kind of get an idea of what I'm painting. Because I, you can't, there's no way I can show it to you on the iPad because of the way it um, uh, reflects. And I, I think that's less important than just sort of seeing how we're adding color. See how we just started putting in these peach colors, kind of this bank around the water. And notice the brush strokes are all going back and forth, not up and down. The brush strokes are um, key here. And the paper is not buckling. I can't say that enough. The paper is not buckling, which I think is kind of exciting. There was a, they had black in the kit, which I used to sort of tone some things down. Um, they had a cobalt and an ultramarine blue and kind of a day, you know, kind of a sunflower yellow and a very pale yellow and and a purple and a red, kind of an orange color. They had some they had some good colors, um, certainly workable colors, a palette, you know. They're not necessarily the colors you normally see, but, you know, as an artist, you have to kind of understand how you get colors. I mean, what makes colors? You know, brown will kind of, you know, dull things, a little bit of that sort of kind of like a burnt sienna color, adding a little more white to that. Kind of turning that into um, some areas where I'm just kind of laying in my landscape, putting in a few rocks, just sort of seeing where stuff is. And that's John being very helpful in putting out some more paint for me where he sees where I'm kind of running out of paint. But I love the fact, you see those two big tubes in the front there? Those are whites. I got two big tubes of white, though. Having said that, I would still bring with me when I. I would still bring some acrylic um, titanium white. And this is gouache, which is a you know totally different animal of paint. It's still it's still an acrylic, but it it was its basis is in watercolor. It's a beautiful jewel tones. And this particular brand, Turner, it's a very, very nice um, quality paint that pigments. You know, when you're talking about the difference between buying cheap paints and more expensive paints. It's talking about the ingredients, the pigments that you put in the paint, and you know how. And they, everybody gets their pigments from the pigment bank, you know, the same place. Okay, pretty much the people that make pigments make pigments, and people buy them from them, and make their paints. It's everybody gets their pigments. So some pigments cost more than others, and then how much pigment you put in instead of filler will determine, as, as my understanding of how this works goes, will determine the quality of the paint. And some really inexpensive acrylics are designed never to be mixed. Did you know that? They, they don't want you to mix them. They want you to just buy all the colors. But when you buy a professional type of acrylic or like these Turner uh, professional gouache paints, um, the colors can be mixed beautifully. And that little uh, ring of, uh, of different papers, that they had recipes in there for all these different colors. So if you're not sure how to make a color, I thought that was really a wonderful thing to do you know, to add that to the kit. And then again, buy one of these little simple, something you can pack in a suitcase. Put everything in a little bag and take it in your suitcase and you're good to travel. You're not bringing a ton of stuff. You're not, you're trying to bring your whole art studio with you so that you can paint on location. And, um, you know, and it's fine to paint flat on a table. We were talking about this as, you know, um, Sometimes I've gone so far as to bring a shower curtain, something with me, an old shower curtain liner, put around, make sure that I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not uh, going to get paint on the floor. But I never felt that with. I didn't feel the need for that. I had, I borrowed one of the ship's coffee cups for water, and uh, just dumped it occasionally, and uh, that worked really well. And honestly, this was such a cool way to paint something. And you'll notice that when I'm mixing colors, I'm constantly changing the, uh, you know, the tones of greens. You'll notice that when I'm mixing something, I'll, uh, uh, you know, wipe the brush, add some white to it, kind of, kind of decide, okay, I've got that color there. What could I change? Brush didn't get rinsed. I still have some green on that brush. 
in a, uh, just a drop of water. You got to be careful not to over wet these. Okay, a drop of water. So I've got sort of this brown green color, and that'll be sort of a darker color for um, you know some of this background. And up comes. Uh, see where we've got this. We're bringing in a tree up here. This is a sort of dark brown color. Now this was interesting. These are the brushes that came with the kit, and I was a little one. I was wondering if I could get a thin thin line with them, and apparently you can. Notice that you can get a nice thin line. Notice so I'm holding that brush almost straight up and down vertically. So, you know, if you're looking on top of my hand, you'll notice that that brush is being held straight up and down in my hand. They've got they had some pointy ones, some ones that were kind of round pointy brushes, and I thought, well, let's give those a try and see what that works like. That was the squared off bright brush. And uh, so how, how would the pointy brush do? This is when I decided I wanted to bring my ruby satin silver angle brushes. I think that uh, I really like those a lot. But uh, you know the small pointy brush did allow me to do some nice little tree limbs. And there's a good flow to this. Uh, the, the paint isn't skipping for me. So I'm putting in a few little trees. And I, uh, then this, this is a nice fall painting. And normally in acrylics, now here's the catch. Normally in acrylics, I would uh, paint more of the background and then do some of this. But I wasn't sure. I really had no idea if this would cover. I'm leaving a little space there where I know I'm going to have some foliage in front of that tree. I actually left a space because I, I didn't know if these paints would actually you know, be opaque and cover on top of this dried dark brown. In other words, generally speaking, in acrylics, yellow only likes to paint over white. And, you know, we've got these beautiful, at the end of this painting, you can see these beautiful yellows and golds and oranges in the fall trees. And I wanted to make sure that this would actually paint over it. This is a really good example of how you might paint something like this. Think of this as a is it almost like a sketch? They're frameable, and we talked about this. Would you frame it? How would you frame these? Well, I think I would just mount these on mat board and put them behind glass. That's that's what I would do. They they weren't very big. I think I'd mount these behind, you know, they're almost postcard size. And again, when you're traveling, you don't. It takes so long to paint this. I think I have about an hour in this painting, and so you don't. Um, you don't want to start anything too big because you're on vacation. You want to be able to paint something and, you know, enjoy the experience of painting without, you know, spending all day at it. If you, you know, or maybe do a few more things. So you have the option when you're traveling to either take a tablet and have a few, um, you know, either photographs with you or some other ideas of some paintings you want to do and paint off your tablet. Or like we did in the first first one, the first painting we did earlier before this, I just looked out the window and painted the Bahamas, okay? And uh, we think that is really cool that you could do this. So these are definitely, we're definitely trapped. These, these um, paints really travel well. I wished I'd had a fine water mister because if, even though I did two paintings with these, they were starting to dry up a tiny little bit. And uh, not bad, really, but I think if I'd had a, just a slight fine mister, I, I probably could have gotten three paintings out of this because even though it doesn't look like I put a lot of paint out on that palette, I had a lot left over. I was shocked at how much I had left over. I, this this paint goes a long ways. I was kind of looking at those little tubes going, I don't know, because you know how acrylics kind of, they go really fast. And these acrylic gouache paints, um, they last a long time. So again, we're leaving a little space where the um, where I'm going to have some leaves just to connect the trees. You know, just left some spaces with on the trunks. And remember, when you're painting trees, trees are wider at the bottom than they are at the top. And again, I'm going to take this moment to just again, if you like landscapes, uh, one of the advantages of uh, uh, going to our website, gingercooklive.gallery and painting, is that uh, it comes with personal art coaching. So suppose you were painting something 
you could just stop right there, take a picture, and send it to me and say, Ginger, this is what I've got so far. What do you think? And I might say, you know what? Get that tree trunk a little bit fatter at the bottom. I think it's a little thin. And I could tell you just that one sentence might, um, you know, make the difference in how your painting came out. We're not talking about, you know, big elaborate criticisms of someone's art. This is real personal art coaching with real help. Um, we have a limited number of spaces we can do this with. We, I say that all the time. Um, at some point, we'll have to have we'll have people on a waiting list, not to necessarily you know see the videos, but to get the help. So, and the thing of it is, is that when you become a member of our website, uh, we grandfather you in the price that we do it. As long as you're still a member, we grandfather you in when and you you absolutely have the personal art coaching that comes with it uh, when you sign up. And if you never you know if you never unsign up, for instance. Then you've you've just you know you've claimed your spot, and really we started 1995 um, as of uh, this is we're September 2000 actually we're October 2017. Uh, the, our price is still uh, for this year is still at uh, uh, 26.95 for uh, 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 over 300 videos, and we add new ones every week and uh, quality step by step interesting lessons. Um, if you're wondering what I'm doing right now, I'm kind of uh, adding some darker green trees in the background, uh, just putting in some small little trees that are, and kind of uh, adding some foliage and just uh, making a dark green color there. And if you want to know how you make dark green, uh, watch my, um, you know, I've got all kinds of videos on YouTube on how you make greens, but basically it's yellow and blue and a little brown or black to make a dark green. Uh, normally I never paint with black. Black came in the kit, so... You know, we'll just take advantage of it. You have to be very careful with black. You don't want black trees. Nothing says amateur art like black trees. So anyway, back to becoming a member of our, our website, one of the advantages of it, a couple of tubes of professional acrylic paint is over the cost of your monthly, is more than a monthly membership with us right now. I mean, and if you're a senior, we do we let you have it, and that's 60 plus, or, um, or in the military, you know, you get a military or police, uh, you know, discount, something like that. It's twenty one ninety five a month. That's not even, that's so inexpensive, I can't tell you. I mean, professional art lessons for me, the people that live in Houston and take lessons for me, trust me, they pay a lot every visit. They're, you know, they really, um, private lessons are, you know, $150 and up. For you know, just an hour or two of private lessons and you know group classes. You know, we we quit doing those for a while. So, you know, group classes were at least uh, you know forty dollars a, a time. You know, that was some years ago. You know, so when you think about what um, what you get for twenty six dollars a month, it's it's phenomenal, and you get the advantage of learning from from the very basics. We have a back to basic lesson, and then we have are, um, you know, one and two cookie lessons where you really learn brush strokes and color mixing. Now you'll notice here that I'm getting into that sort of daffodil gold kind of color that they had in the kit. And I was very concerned that that yellow wouldn't paint over those purple mountains. Do you see those purple mountains? I was very concerned about that. Um, and it did. Now that's really great. That's the difference. A watercolor wouldn't have done that. But this is acrylic paint, and the gouache colors tend to be a little bit more jewel tone, a little brighter. You'll notice I'm painting right over the sky with this, and the sky's dry. Now, if the sky had been wet, what you would have ended up with, because yellow and blue make green, you would have ended up with some green leaves. Now, this is the trick when you're layering anything, is you've got to make sure that stuff's dry. And please notice that I've not used a hair dryer on this. So that's the kind of stuff that, you know, these are the kind of tips that I think are helpful you'll see I'm starting to build this painting up in a watercolor style, even though we're not painting it in the same order that watercolors would paint. So could you look at, say, a painting of a watercolor and get that technique? Could you kind of get those kind of loose brush strokes? They call that loose, where when we mean loose, what we mean is um, just a few little lines indicate something as opposed to great detail, okay? So you'll notice that we're putting a little of that gold down in the... Um, color down into the ground where the leaves might have fallen. And then we're going to come back and put that up in the trees. 
that's a pretty yellow. If you're wondering about yellows, look at our YouTube video called Adventures in Yellow. I went to Jerry's art store and I got every Matisse yellow paint they had. And we have Adventures in Yellow, Adventures in Red, and Adventures in Blue for colors. And if you want to just kind of know, the reason that for, most, for the most part I use in my regular acrylic paintings, I just use cad yellow medium and yellow oxide, but I do like that sort of daisy yellow. And because yellow is a primary color, what it means is you can't make yellow by mixing it with something else. You can't, you know, make blue and red get yellow. Okay, yellow is yellow. Okay, so when you buy tubes of yellow paint, they're kind of unique. Like, for instance, cadmium yellow medium and cadmium yellow light are two different colors and you can't put white into cadmium yellow medium and get the same tone of yellow as you can with um, you know w w buying the yellow out of the tube so if you're gonna buy a bunch of different paints people always say what color should I buy I would say always never hurts to get extra primary colors like magenta is a color that you really can't mix um, you won't get that nice sort of purple magenta color. And these bright yellows are just stunning. I'm adding just a tiny bit of cad red medium to those. And I think there was a, I think they actually had, you know, adding some oranges and putting in these fall colors. And I love how it's painting over the blue sky and covering it. Because I had very, I was really concerned that this wouldn't cover at all. And you can see that it is. But again, watch, um, make sure you're rinsing your brush between this. That's important. Rinse your brush. And between colors and uh, make. And one thing I found was these brushes I thought were very good brushes that came in the kit. There was a, you know, a couple of, um, you know, you know, pointy ones, you know, some round pointy ones, and a couple of uh, uh, bright brushes. And so they had they had nice brushes, but they. Any kind of brush will drop drop water if you don't want when you put it in the. When you rinse it and if you don't wipe it off on a towel you really need to have a towel in your lap at all times a lot of pictures and particularly when you're dealing with paper too you don't really want water dropping on it so again you see how i have a a terry cloth towel underneath my canvas and i'm wiping the brush on it a lot and particularly after i've gone in the water you know tapping it off so again, we're just going to keep, you know, adding some background and some foliage. We're going to end up with this, I think, very fun fall painting. And again, if you if you've watched a lot of the videos I've made on landscapes, it's a totally different way to paint one, isn't it? So, so you know, one thing about this, you can be a little bold and brave when you're painting things. Try some different styles. Sometimes, you know, people that can paint very realistic have a terrible time with Impressionism. We've got a video, really good video on YouTube on, uh, you know, this Impressionistic landscape. And it's, some people can do it so easily because Impressionists, what they did was they went out with their wet oil paints, which never dried, and they went out on location. And they, in order to not have to spend weeks and weeks and weeks on a painting, they would just, kind of do little tiny brush strokes and just sort of very gently lay the paint down and overlap okay tiny little brush strokes and when you stood back from it your eye kind of mixed the colors and that's a different style painting than say where you're doing a realistic portrait and everything is blended so sometimes people that can do impressionistic paintings you know don't do that well maybe with detailed paintings and people that are what we used to, John and I lovingly call you sock folders, you guys that are so neat, everything's so perfect, find it very hard to paint loosely because you want to add that next bit of detail. But remember that we're suggesting leaves in here. We're suggesting foliage with very few marks on the can on the paper, very few marks. And please notice this paper is not buckling at all, which I think is cool. And I'm excited about this because if we're able to, since we've been shown that we're able to film as we're traveling and actually create videos, I can paint so many wonderful things just, um, you know, looking out the window. And you can come along with me either in person or just follow along in these videos. We think this is great, a great way to introduce you to new new ideas, new, new techniques. And I love the squash kit. I think I will, um, I think I'm a big fan of this. One thing I think I might want to try, too, is that if you've ever seen our Paramount little tiny miniature tablet of canvases, 
I think I would bring some of those too and then pre-paint a few of them with regular acrylics. I sure for sure want a water mister. Oh, what else would I bring? A water mister I would bring uh, that I didn't have today. Water mister, I would bring my a couple of my three-quarter inch, quarter inch angle ruby satin silver brushes. I think these are fine, but I think I'd bring those because brushes don't take up a lot of room. I would bring titanium white because the, even though this tube, this paint kit came with two tubes of gouache white, I think my uh, titanium white um, is, you know, is a little more opaque than theirs, a little bit more, just slightly, but, you know, that's just a personal preference. And I would bring mixing white by Liquitex for backgrounds. So, but really so little I would have to add to this to travel. And that's the secret of traveling with when you're going on vacation and you're taking your stuff and traveling. You don't want to take the whole art studio with you. You want to say, what can I, what could I take and not take? Of course, you'd probably want some, um, if you're going to use any kind of tape on paper, um, I wouldn't use, I'm, artist tape might work. I didn't try it, but um, there is a, an artist tape specifically for paper so that you don't pull up the surface of the paper. You want to look for that. If you were doing, for instance, you know, any kind of painting where you're doing little buildings and stuff, you might want to tape something. I don't know that I would use artist tape on this paper. Try it first. You know, that's the thing to do. Before you go somewhere, uh, just try some uh, different things at home. Don't, <laughs> you know, we just blindly went out there on the, you know, grabbed all the stuff, put it in the kit, went and see how we were doing, and um, and we're filming it. You're watching me paint this and experiment with this paint. You and I are experimenting with this together. And so far, I'm very happy with the results. Um, I'm trying to, I'm going to add, go back and add a few tree limbs now on top. Remember, I had a few trees and limbs underneath. Now I'm sort of connecting some trees. Do you see that? See my river starting to take shape, connecting my trees. Going to reshape the brush and very gently put in a few tree tree limbs. Um, didn't like that one. Didn't work. So that's so I'm going to wet the brush, reshape it. Kind of, it's a round brush. Going to reshape it. That was the round one. Yeah. Go back in, try it again. Now, is that going to be a thin enough line? Okay, now remember, the harder you push on a brush, the fatter the line. Um, we've got a great video on can your brush do that? Um, is it the brush? Is it you? Sometimes it's the brush, sometimes it's you. Um, okay, we're going to again take a moment and see. I'm going to just take the um, turn it upside down. I'm going to pull the branch toward me. Sometimes it's easier to get a thin line if you're starting from the bottom and pulling up. Again, I'm going to wipe that off because you're just not happy with the line. And it does, it does come off with the towel. Now again, this is paper, so you have to be careful not to rub too hard and get through the surface of the paper. It does kind of erase, and I'll put my um, leaves back because I kind of took those off and I'm not drying anything. I don't have a hair dryer there so I'm relying on the paper to dry and um, I'm going to put out a little more paint. It's um, a little tiny bit more paint. A little bit of white with it. Kind of lighten that up there. And again it does paint uh, very beautifully paints over those mountains and look how vibrant those yellows and oranges are. Really pretty. So, okay, so back to trying the trees. So we appreciate your likes, your comments, and again, if you haven't subscribed to our channel, we'd love it if you would do that. Please check out our website. Um, my main thing is to find a, um, I think at this point what I'm looking for is um, uh, another brush. I'm going to just try this again with, the, with those tap in some more a little bit more trees because remember I had to erase all that so I got to put all that back before I put the tree limb and it did work okay now let's come back here and all right uh, there can we get another branch don't be afraid to just spin your paper around or your canvas around if you're having trouble with doing thin lines 
if for some people it's easier to pull a line down for others to, to bring it back up again it's the pressure on the brush and your tip that kind of thing so be aware that that's what you're doing be aware when you're starting to add the details because now is this is where to pull this whole painting together now we're adding the details of all the little branches parts of the tree again reshape your brush every time i get paint i reshape it i'm kind of thickening up some of these tree trunks now that were pretty thin and I'm going to make them a little bit bigger now what's coming out now which is interesting is we found these brushes on Amazon there's a whole package of these brushes for three bucks these are these little tiny nail brushes that um, um, you see that little package of brushes? I had like 12 or, I don't know, it's a ton of them in there. It was $3. And they're for people that paint fingernails. They were $3 on Amazon. We'll put a link on our website and our, you know, under resources, we'll put a link. And they are absolutely ideal for doing little tiny thin lines. You see that? And I'm going to, what I'm going to do is I'm going to test them. And then I said, well, I'll see you I'm going to test them. It's on the back of, the, of this paper because it doesn't bleed through. Look, see that thin little line I'm getting? Now, I wasn't happy with the branch I was getting there, but now I can see I can do that. That's a very, it's a perfect brush for the squash. And, you know, at $3, um, that's great, isn't it? Look at that. That's a long, very long, skinny brush fine detail brush. Detail brushes are one of those things. You can't leave them in water. you got to rinse them and get the paint out right away. And they, uh, I don't know. I just, what a great idea, right? Nail brushes. You know, these are for fingernails. And, you know, John found those on Amazon. And I think that, um, I think they came all the way from China. They were shipped all the way from China. But if you've ever watched uh, people that get acrylic nails now, they're getting these beautiful little paintings on their nails. So now, this is the brush that came in the kit and it's okay it's just not see it's all right it, it's kind of doing it um, but that's one of the things you can do is to test your brush first on something else before you put it on the paper decide how you like something there's that little white brush now I'm going to show you the difference here's that brush that came in the kit and it's a good line and then here's the little white brush we got from China. Very tiny brush, see? Very thin. So you got to imagine how small the paper is, too. This is a small picture. So, I mean, that's pretty cool, I think. I thought that was very impressive. I'll, I'm going to use that one to just get these fine little details. Because this is so little. When you're painting this, you're probably not going to paint this as small as I did. So if you paint this a little bigger, you don't have to worry about having your brush so small. But when you're doing something that's li little, you know, then you um, you need to be able to get your tree limbs smaller. And each time going to each branch gets paint. I can't express this enough. Every time you do a branch, you go back and you get more paint. A little tiny water, bit of water on the tip of the brush. A little tiny bit of paint. Make sure you've got flow going. A little bit of water on the tip of the brush. Zap it off on the ta on the towel. Um, make sure that you've got uh, uh, you've got it loaded with enough paint. And if you're changing colors now, if you're changing colors with it, then you've got to rinse it off and wipe it off. That's real important. Now, here's our lighter greens that are coming. We're going to see now this is layering pretty well. We're going to bring some lighter greens up into the front. Notice how little amount of paint. It, this this wash is so cool because it's taking very little paint to do that. Do you see that? Very little paint to do that. 
I'm adding some just some light highlight to those bushes. Just kind of add, dotting a few little bits of light green. And you can see how our painting is. It didn't look like much of anything. But again, we've allowed some of the paper to show through. Just a little tiny bit, not much. And uh, we're just adding some hot, you know, lows, lights, and darks. That's what all acrylic, acrylic is. It's just light and dark layers of color. And this is what I would call a watercolor sketch, even though it's uh, acrylics. So it's like a very simple watercolor sketch. Very pretty. Um, if I was doing this in a larger in acrylics with my regular acrylics on a larger painting, um, I might paint it the same way because I, 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 I like the effect of this. I really love the effect of this. Wipe it off. Wipe, wipe, wipe. And it's interesting to me how well this paint is still waking up. You saw how that look. At, you know, if that was a, a regular acrylic on a um, on a canvas, it was it it would not wake up. Um, you know, that paint would be dried. It would be gone. But you'll notice that that paint I could still activate it. That's to made me wake it up or activate it. You saw look how thin that was. There wasn't a lot of paint left. In that little spot on the palette, and there it is. Okay, and the other thing I would bring is an iPad holder, a different iPad case to hold my iPad up so I could see it, or maybe a little easel to hold my iPad up. I was going to use my iPad as an example because you know, either, either paint from one of my photographs or some painting that you know, just some picture I found on the internet I wanted to just experiment with that uses a reference. Um, I would uh, for sure um, uh, get an iPad holder. I think I've got that propped up somewhere. John's holding it, one or the other. John's holding it. But again, painting on paper is really different, isn't it? You can. I used to have a teacher. Her name was bon Bonnie Newman. And when Cinnamon was going to college, my daughter, Cinnamon, um, she didn't have enough people in her class in her junior college to, for, the, uh, for the art class to continue. They were going to drop it. And so I got a couple of my friends, and we all went up and took the class, too, even though I could have taught it up at, um, up at Tomball Junior College in t Texas there. So that uh, it was fun. I really liked the teachers. Nice gal. Bonnie Newman was her name. And... Uh, uh, Let's see, what was it going with? Why was I thinking about Bonnie? She talked about not overworking stuff. And she always said, don't overwork it. And what does that mean, don't overwork a painting? Well, sometimes you've got to know when to quit. That's the trick. You do a few brush strokes and stop and look. I, I always like to tell people, one, two, three, stop, look. One, two, three, stop, look. Just do something. Don't do one, don't do 12 brush strokes and then look and go, oh gosh, the last 10 were horrible. One, two, three, stop, look. One, two, three, stop. That's really helpful. Um, tape that up on your easel. You know, count. Just take a minute. Hold your picture up to a mirror and look at it. Um, you can often see where things are really off in a mirror. Take a black and white photo of your painting. It's so easy. You know, in the old days, I mean, you know, like even 15 years ago, that was a challenge. Now you just get your cell phone out, take a photograph of it, take a second in to edit, put it into black and white, look at a black and white picture of yourself, of your painting, make sure you have the values, that you have your lights and your dark. It just doesn't look like one big gray mass of picture um, with no contrast when it's a black and white painting. Make sure you have your lights and your darks and your lightest light and your darkest dark is by your center of interest. That is really important. Now you see I'm adding some light. This is this. Now this is, you couldn't do this with watercolor, but you can with gauche. We're adding some light. I added some light highlights to those trees. And uh, again, redefining some of the river back there. Um, you know, there we go. So we've got this little path of water that's coming that's reflecting the sky. Notice the angle of the of the brush strokes on the sky, you know, how they kind of go down a little bit and bring your eye back down into those uh into those uh into those trees. 
this is really fun. I think this is a pretty painting, and I think this is exactly the kind of thing you want to be able to do on vacation. Now I'm adding a few little of the dark brown leaves, just a few little contrasting uh, colors. Come back and dot that on. A few little dot, dark areas of dark brown. Kind of a rust color. This is probably, probably that brown is closer to burnt sienna if you were using a regular acrylics. Um, back there, this little tree didn't have a lot on it. This little back tree back there. And um, I'm saying that there's some dark browns. And this very, this is, this painting is simple. And, and yet it's a challenge. And here's why it's a challenge. It's really, it's not hard to do, but it's hard to just stop doing stuff. Now, again, I'm going back and adding a few little tree limbs here and there. Um, or maybe I needed to connect some. This is where you kind of kind of refine your stuff, kind of take a good look at it. But as you can see, we've got, it looks like nothing, and then it comes together and becomes something. We've got the little darker rocks around the bank. Um, Kind of define the shoreline of the water. So I hope that uh, th that these videos. I'm so excited. We're going to be traveling um, a lot this fall, and we're going to be shooting videos and 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 bringing you along on our trips. And at some point, um, you know, every once in a while we'll announce a trip we're going to take, and you know, we'll try to do it next year. We're going to be doing some, and we'll try and announce it in advance. So maybe some of you would like to uh, to just come along and join us. Uh, you know, just to hang out a little bit. You know. Uh, and see what we're doing. We're going to try to be painting on every cruise we do or those little vacations. We'll let you guys know if anybody wants to come. Um, you know, gingercooklive.gallery, use the contact us section if you want to have some additional information about trips we might take. Uh, John and I always travel on the cheap. Um, we won this cruise. Actually, we won it. Can you imagine? We won this cruise, and so, of course, we took it. We we won this, and um, um, we don't, we, we try to fi find the least expensive, you know, we find the deals, the least expensive ways to travel and, um, and you can't beat cruising for that. And people always say, well, aren't you worried about getting seasick and stuff like that? And, um, we buy those little patches. They're really, they, they have these little patches that go behind your ears and, um, we wear those. And, uh, we're, we're, and John is actually very susceptible to seasickness, and he's yet to be sick, knock on wood, on a, on a cruise. Because, again, we buy the non-drowsy Dramamine, and um, if we think the waves are getting you know, a little bit rocky, we would, we would be the first ones to take those pills. But we've done, about, uh, we've done a lot of traveling, and we've discovered that's a great way to um, be inspired. You know, if you're an artist, you, you can't just sit in your studio. You've got to get out in the world and see it to be inspired. We've got to be excited about what we're painting. You'll notice when we come back from the trip, this is when we're the most excited, when we have the most energy, is when we're doing, when we've had a chance to travel and get out and see the world. And that's real important. And um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And please, hey, subscribe. Check us out on our, um, please check us out on our, um, uh, our website, gingercooklive.gallery. Think about getting some personal art coaching. Uh, just take advantage of the, we have exclusive videos that are not on YouTube at all. And people, what came up? Um, what came up? This was real important. One lady said, I was afraid to try your stuff. I'm telling you what. I don't know what there's to be afraid of. Acrylics dry. You just paint over them. You can't screw it up. And, you know, there's no grades in life. I mean, when, by the time you get to be an adult and you're doing stuff, this is a skill you're learning, just like driving a car or being being on the computer. Do you remember, if you're my age, do you remember the first time somebody showed you a computer and a mouse and suggested you do anything with that stupid mouse? Do you remember how I was going, what am I supposed to do with this? And who wants email? And what, are you kidding me? I don't want email. I don't, another thing to do. Now, you know, we're practically wet wired into our computers. None of us can get along without them. Uh, the internet goes down and we all just collapse. What I love about our uh, the Royal Caribbean cruise ships and what I love about that is that we buy an internet package. So even when we're traveling, we still 
uh, in contact with our members. We do personal art coaching that never stops. John, you know, John's still up till three in the morning answering emails, helping people with technical problems. We we have videos that are released on time. So even when we're out of town, we're in town with you. We're always connected to you guys. That's what's so cool. And you can always contact us if you have a question, and we're there. I mean. There might be an hour or two where the internet isn't all that great, but the, we're there for you, and, and we're happy to do it and answer questions, and particularly for our members. If That's one of the advantages of being a member is that you can ask questions. And um, and if when we come back, when we're in town, and we do our live shows, I had someone actually complain the other day about that. Going, well, there's just a lot of talking from people answering questions. We want to answer your questions. So write us if you have a question. I'll try to answer your question in a video. Sometimes it, a, a picture is worth a thousand words or a demonstration, and I'm happy. I'm excited to do that. So I think at this point I was getting out my little picture. I had all those brushes in that kit for $3, but I really ended up using just two of them. There were some tiny little short ones, and um, you can see that real long one for the, you know, the, the you know you can see that real long and they're all that they're little there's a little fan brush in there these are cute aren't they three bucks couldn't believe that and then i think this gouache kit i know some of you're going to ask how much that was and i hate to quote a price because daniel gave that to me as a gift john bought one later and it just depends when you you know when you get them on sale i think they're it's again i'm not going to quote a price but jerry's artorama sells them if you want to know where to get them, and I, probably some other people do too. We'll put a link on our website to Jerry's or wherever we can. And um, if you call Daniel Elliott in Houston, Texas, um, if you give Daniel a call at Jerry's Artorama, he's the manager. He said he'd mail them out anywhere. You know, if you want, if you can't find them anywhere, call Daniel. He's and we'll we'll have him back on our show as a guest. He's the one that did those beautiful clouds. And he's an oil painter, but um, he's he's my. Um, art expert as far as knowing a lot about different art materials and I really want to thank him for introducing me to gouache paint because um, this is great stuff uh, really great stuff I'll have to just uh, I have to say you see me I'm going back around now this is that pure yellow when I'm going up back around adding a bit of bright color to this you see what I'm doing and again this layers just like acrylics now look at that isn't that just amazing how that works and again, you couldn't do this with watercolor, but you could get that super watercolor look with these paints. And in another video, we're going to show you how to do it on canvas, too. So we'll, we'll, a lot of different ways to paint things. Find the way that makes you happy. And I'm putting a little more yellow out. and didn't need anywhere near that much. I'm Quite frankly, I would have probably have been better off, rather than put that little bit of gouache out on, that, um, on, the, on the little... Um, plastic palette I should have just taken it right out of the tube because I needed just a drop or two of the brighter kind of that daisy yellow color whatever they called that this bright sunflower yellow to brighten that up but wow those are some beautiful colors on this absolutely vibrant and imagine it went over that super so then someone's going to ask well can you use gouache over regular acrylics I don't see why not I bet I think you can mix them well, we'll have to try it. We'll see, huh? We'll see. Now, little tiny touches now. Just tiny little touches. Is there a little bit of what yellow reflection in the water? Uh, I don't know. Maybe a little bit. Cover that up like that. There was, yeah, there was a little bit of yellow we put in the water, and I think at this point I'm signing my name. We'll see how that works. Okay, that's defining what that, that's the shorter brush. So that's in that $3 kit, that's the short one. The other one had a much longer, um, was a much, the brush, actual head of the brush was longer. This is short. I think I'm think I was going to see if I couldn't couldn't quite get the thin line so now we're going to get back to our Posca pens and I'm just going to take a blue one and sign my name a name to this because um, th this painting was so small it was hard to do it so hope you enjoyed this um, 
on our travels, travels with Ginger and John, as we, um, you know, um, bring you different lessons all the time. Don't forget to subscribe and uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. So I'm testing the point here. Now I'm going to write my name. And make sure your paint is dry before you do that. The caveat. The last thing you want to do is make sure the paint is dry. Don't sign don't use a Posca pen on wet paint. 